Hello everyone, welcome to my office where today I'm gonna to go over the bones of the lower extremity and the pelvic girdle. Okay, let's look at the coxal bone. Um, this is the right coxal bone to be specific and the other half um, together with this would make up the os coxi or the pelvic girdle. So the different parts of the coxal bone will be the pubis, or where your pubic bone would be, where you'd think that'd be. This is the ischium, and then up here is the ilium. So let's go over specific parts of each um, section. On the most superior portion of the ilium, we have this iliac crest, and the iliac crest is something that we can palpate clinically. We can use this as a bony landmark, which is nice. Um, here on the anterior side, okay, so if we were looking at this, this is anterior, this is lateral, posterior, and then this is the medial side right here. So this anterior superior iliac spine is another clinically important um, uh, landmark because it's actually where the base of the appendix is. Um, in the right lower quadrant. So kind of tying some skeletal features with my AMP1 students to the digestive uh, features that we're looking at the same week in AMP2, the base of the appendix is actually in this area. And so if someone comes in with right lower quadrant pain, um, the um, physician or perhaps the nurse practitioner or phys physician assistant will come in and, and mush on your belly. And if you have marked pain here, that's actually a positive McBurney sign. Um, so anterior superior iliac spine, important for that reason. Uh, then right here we have the greater sciatic notch and it's named as such because as we're gonna see in a few weeks, the very large sciatic nerve is going to run through this area. Then we have the ischial spine. Um, remember, anytime we have these little bony projections, that's where something is likely to connect. So that helps us make sense of why we have all these little bony features. Um, if I flip this over, this is actually the ischial tuberosity. And um, again, a tuberosity is another bony feature that's going to kind of come outwards. In fact, that greater sciatic, or excuse me, the sciatic notch is going to go through this greater sciatic notch right here and run right alongside this ischial tuberosity. And then when we start looking at muscles, we'll see that um, uh, the semimembranosus is actually going to um, attach to this tibial, ischial tuberosity. So again, the bony landmarks help us understand how the muscular system attaches to the skeletal system. Um, here we have the acetabulum. The acetabulum is actually the socket and the ball and socket joint of the hip. And the head of the femur is actually gonna go right in there. It is a very deep ball and socket joint. It is a very strong ball and socket joint because in addition to having a very deep bony um, uh, socket, a joint like right there, we have all these muscles that are gonna go on top of that. So the hip joint is actually um, a very strong joint. That's why it's a big deal if someone dislocates their hip and it's, it's a medical emergency that needs to be evaluated immediately. Um, here, we have the obturator foramen. And again, anytime we have things like foramens or holes, we're going to have um, things like blood vessels and nerves run through those. So to help you distinguish left and right, this greater sciatic notch is going to be medial. The acetabulum is lateral and that makes sense because that femur is going to go into it just like so. And then if you remember that the pubis is kind of where your pubic bone is, it's the most anterior, then looking at it like this, you can very easily tell that this is the right coxal bone. This is the femur, and here we have the head. Again, remember the head is always gonna be the proximal end, which makes this part the neck. And just like we saw in the humerus, this is again called the surgical neck. And so if you've ever heard of someone 
breaking their hip, more than likely it was a femoral neck fracture. So that head is going to go medially. Then we have two trochanters. We have the, the greater trochanter, so if I were to flip this around, we have the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter. By the way, this is the an anterior side and this is the posterior side. So if you know that this is anterior and that the head is going medially, that means this is the left femur. So the head is medial, the greater trochanter is lateral. Um, along the shaft, let me turn this around, along the shaft of the femur is this Again, this little part that kind of comes upwards a, a tiny bit, that's called the linea aspera, and that will serve as an attachment site for muscles that we'll look at in a couple of weeks. At the distal end of the uh, femur, we have these condyles, and you should recognize that term because we saw these knuckle-shaped structures uh, at the base of the skull, those occipital condyles. So here it's the same thing. So um, unfortunately, my desk is not big enough to show this whole femur. So let's kind of, we'll go back and forth. So this, the femoral head is medial. So if we were to figure out which one of those condyles is medial, you just kind of follow this all the way down. Medial condyle. When we remember that the greater trochanter is lateral, again, we follow that down, and that is the lateral condyle. One other thing I want to show you on the head of the femur is this little depression called the fovea capitis. And the fovea capitis is a deep insertion point for a muscle called the ligamentum teres. So let me show you how these two bones articulate. Again, we have the acetabulum of the coxal bone, and then we have the head of the femur. This is the right coxal bone. We know that because of our memory trick. And this is the right femur, and we know that because this runs medially. And then we remember looking at the entire bone, those condyles are on the posterior side. So we're looking at the back side of these two bones, but this ball and socket goes in just like that. All right, now we have the tibia, which is the main weight-bearing bone of the anatomical leg. So remember the anatomical leg is um, from the knee down. So this up here will be the proximal end. We have a medial, let me turn this like so. We have a medial and lateral condyle. You may have guessed that these articulate with the medial and lateral condyles of the femur. So those knuckle-like uh, uh, condyles on the femur are going to articulate with the condyles of the tibia. Then on the anterior side, we have the tibial tuberosity. And this tibial tuberosity is actually where you're going to have um, the uh, patellar tendon attach to the tibia. So remember, your patella is going to be in this area right here. And then you're going to have a tendon that will um, attach that to this tibial tuberosity. So if this is medial, this is lateral, and this is anterior, that means we are looking at the left tibia. On uh, the anterior side of the shaft of the tibia, we have this anterior crest. It's also referred to as the anterior margin or anterior border. This is commonly known as your shin bone. So if you've ever had shin splints or um, you've gotten a shinner or something like that, this is the bone. You can really easily palpate this on your own body. So then let's go to the distal end of the bone. We have the uh, these structures called malleoli. 
and the tibia will have the medial malleolus. So if you were to palpate those bony-like structures in your ankle, I think people commonly call these the ankle bones, the one on the inside is the medial malleolus. So really what you're palpating is the distal end of your tibia. So again, the tibia creates the medial malleolus. Okay, this is the fibula. This is going to be the long, skinny, lateral bone of the anatomical leg. And I just have a couple of very basic things to point out on this bone. Um, how do we tell which end is proximal and which end is distal? Well, this is the head of the um, fibula and the head is going to have a styloid process. So if you remember the styloid process from the radius and ulna, it's kind of that same shape. That is going to be located on the head of the fibula. So that's how you can easily tell that this is the proximal end. And then the distal end is going to be kind of this triangular uh, portion. Um, this is actually the lateral malleolus. So whereas when we just looked at the tibia, which created the medial malleolus on the distal end of that tibia, the distal end of the fibula is the lateral malleolus. And um, this is the left, uh, left fibula. Um, a way that I kind of remember is that remember that is that the triangle kind of when you're looking at the anterior side it, it points to what side so this is anterior so then this is pointing to the left side so this is the left uh, fibula so go ahead and palpate that lateral little knobby structure by your ankle what you're feeling is the distal end of your fibula this is the right foot. Um, here we have the calcaneus, which is commonly known as the heel of the foot. And then we have the talus. The talus is going to articulate with the distal end of the tibia. And then that talus connects to these bones. These are cuneiforms. And then we have a cuboid, which then uh, articulate with these metatarsals. So whereas in the hands we had metacarpals, in the feet we have metatarsals. And then very similar to what we saw with the uh, phalanges, we have a proximal, middle, and distal, except in the great toe or the hallux. We only have a proximal and distal phalanx. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Please hit like and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. I'll see you next time.